So now that I have my placeholder text in place, um, I'm going to lock my text and just the graphic is going to be active. And I want to play around with a, a few different effects I could use to just make it look a little bit more interesting. Right now, there's nothing wrong with just the, the plain box. But if you want to create a little depth between that and the background, you could go in and use an effect. Now, the one that's going to be the most useful here is Stylize and Drop Shadow. And here, turn on Preview, and you can see it's going to give you a, a little dark drop shadow here. I usually like to match these numbers up. So uh, I have 777. I think 5 pixels for the offset and blur is probably the lowest you want to go. Anything else becomes way too subtle. Uh, click OK and now I have a drop shadow. And you know the drawback when you add them here is that you once you've added it you can't really go back in and and change your mind in the same way. You can in, in Photoshop, which we'll look at later. If you wanted to make another change, say make the uh, make the background a gradient, that is something that's very easy to do as well. First, uh, start by clicking in this middle option to add a gradient to the shape. This is obviously not going to work very well with our white text, but also it's not the kind of gradient I would like to use. Um, this area would be the area I would want to be dark and this area would be where I would really want it to be light. So I'm going to go in and edit the gradient and there are two places I can do that. If I just want to flip the uh, black and the white I can go to the gradient tool and that allows me to drag and draw. So here I am just going to hold down the shift key when I do that and that will keep me from doing this and drawing my gradient at an angle. So shift key and drag and then I'll get something that is is pretty sh straight. So the way this is going to work right now it's going to go from black to white. If I want to make any edits or changes to that I would go to the gradient gradient panel and if that's not visible it's a little icon on in the Essentials Classic. It's right over here. Or you can always bring it up by going Window, Window Gradient. And that will bring it up. So if I wanted to change the color or change the transparency, I could do that very easily. For the transparency in the gradient, often you'll see a gradient go from opaque to transparent. And that is, uh, that's a very easy fix. Um, you would start by changing the colors. If it's going from opaque to transparent, generally you want to use the same color for both parts of the gradient. Otherwise, you'll get a little part in the middle where you're getting a mix of two colors and that's not usually what you want. I click here, so double click on this to change this to black. And now it looks like it, it's the same. But if we go here and select it again and go to Opacity, we can actually drop that Opacity down. So I can make it 50%. It's going to show up much, it's going to be much more obvious when we actually have this over a background video. But we could go as low as zero. And the only drawback here is that we've added a drop shadow. So it winds up looking like it's going from black to a, a dark gray. We could also go in and change how it progresses from one to the other. This determines how abrupt or how gradual that change is. With the drop shadow, we can actually be super gradual. The closer it is to this one here, the more abrupt it's going to be. If we want to change the color, again, just click here. And I went over this with just the black and white, but if we switch this to RGB, then we're going to have all the, the different color options. We can go in, can adjust it according to what we want it to be. So I'm just going to make it, I don't know, purple seems like it's a little bit too much, so I'm just going to make it a little bit bluer. And I'm going to, actually I didn't make a note of this color, so I'm going to go back. 
I'm going to copy the hexadecimal for that and if I want it to go from that now this is going to be a, a little bit different because this is going to have that drop shadow in the background but so it's still going to have some of that shadow color there but again this gives you uh, something that is a little bit more subtle as a, a gradient and actually it's it's not bad to have a gradient go like that because this uh, gives you a lower third where you can have a lighter color text on the entire thing. There's no really light color drop off here. It stays dark to the end. And the gradient difference adds a little bit of an interest. And the drop shadow creates a little bit of a sense of depth to the, the image as a whole. So um, again, here we have, we have the guides, the graphic, and the text all isolated on different layers. I would save it. Um, so this would be my basic lower third. And this is being saved as an Illustrator file. And if I want to create something a little bit different, I've also asked you to go in and add the Illustrator file that has the uh, the wave graphic in it. Uh, to add that to another Illustrator document, just go File, Open. I'm going to open the wave only file. And it's exactly what it says. It's just the wave. The layer is unlocked, so I can just drag around it to select all component parts. And you can see over here the wave is actually made up of several different paths. There are highlights that are included as additional objects. So that's why it's, it's more complicated than it first appears. I'm going to copy that, go to basic lower third. And I'm actually going to put this on a separate layer just to make it easy to edit. I'm going to call this wave. Make sure that is selected and I'm going to paste that. So I have the wave here. I can scale it up or scale it down. Uh, to scale it either way, just hold down the Shift key and then drag. And the Shift key again keeps it proportional so you're not distorting as you drag. I'm going to place it where I want it to go. So let's say right there. And then I'm just going to, obviously then I need to adjust the position of my, of my text. Uh, here I might also want to go in and add maybe a little bit of a drop shadow here as well. Just to create a little bit more depth. I mean, you could do a whole bunch of different things. I'm just going to keep it basic, but this gives me my logo, my lower third, and it's a little bit more visually interesting than just a plain box.